Hello, everybody, and welcome to Community Forum. My name is Ron Vecchia, and this is me and the manager. And also joining us today is our DPW director, Steve Calla. Welcome, Steve. Thank you. I think this is the first time you've been on my show recently. Recently. You, you were on years ago. Yes. Talking yeah. about stuff. Storm sort of stuff back in the... Uh, That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Well, listen, uh, as, as you all know, you know, I usually do me and the manager right after we do a council meeting and we kind of follow up on some of the discussions that we've had and some of the issues facing the town. And of course, the big issue uh, that we're confronting here is the information relative to uh, the center revitalization project, which has been ongoing in the planning stages now for a couple of years. And uh, we're, we do have a, a special meeting of the council uh, that's going to be held next uh, Tuesday, April 3rd, at the uh, Neil Shapiro Auditorium at 7 p.m. And we invite all residents of the town to come down and uh, you can voice your opinion relative to the project. And we'll also be talking about the uh, project on, on uh, the old middle school site as well. And if there's enough time, we'll even talk about the, uh, the ferry service. So that is next um, Monday, April 3rd. Um, so today, let's, let's start off with a discussion about the timeline and some of the confusion involved in this whole funding process uh, relative to the, to the center. And Stephen uh, has been working on this thing since day one, and uh, you did a very, very good job the other night at the council meeting explaining to people that, you know, exactly how the, the price has gotten to where it is today. Mm -hmm. So I thought it would be good for you to kind of review it today on community forum. Sure. So give us kind of a timeline and, and history lesson, so to speak. Sure. So. We all know that really no infrastructure work has really occurred down the down the center business district since the early 90s when you know uh, when that project was done and and as part of that project it was really more so just a uh, a, a hardscape improvements right. and uh, you know they eliminated some traffic safety hazards mm -hmm. uh, but really no infrastructure work was. Uh, that's correct. Was done in that project, right. minus a few spot repairs and, mm -hmm. and, and some a couple of minor uh, water upgrades. Um, so back in as early as 2007, we in, uh, we investigated. We, we had a, an issue down. Uh, some people may remember the uh, the construction that occurred on Woodside near the Terry's restaurant. That mm -hmm. that leg of uh, of Woodside Ave. We had a, 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 a sewer uh, main collapse, and at that point we identified really. Uh, some substantial um, need for, for sewer improvements down in the French Square area. So in 2008, <clears throat> we, excuse me, we added it to the capital improvement plan. It's mm -hmm. the first time that, you know, uh, Winthrop Center uh, project under my, uh, you know, tenure here had hit the capital improvement uh, plan. And we started design work on uh, just strictly so sewer improvements around mm -hmm. that area. So uh, Woodside Ave from Pauline Street into, into French Square, um, some stuff on Hagman Road, and um, extending up Bartlett uh, a ways. And we had estimates at that time around $1.2 uh, you know, to do, again, just addressing the, the, uh, the de de deficiencies with the sewer. Mm -hmm. uh, Things occurred from the, from that time. Uh, you know, there was other projects that were that were prioritized. You know, and and, and infrastructure work, as you, as we all know, happened around town. Mm -hmm. We never really got into the center area. Uh, and then the center area, you know, with the um, you know developers, we're trying to the town trying to attract developers down there, and conversations with developers and, and the and the past town manager, kind of set a project in motion mm -hmm. and it became more than a sewer infrastructure project uh, because the town wanted to pursue a uh, mass works grant mm -hmm. uh, in early uh, uh, January of 2017 and the, uh, the town requested uh, Wooden and Curran to design uh, a project not just solely around the sewer system but to now incorporate water, sewer and, uh, and drainage. drainage. Which, Again, is, which though, is a big issue in which, the center. Which is a big issue. Okay. Again, in the same limits, though, as, as what we were, we were looking at the source. So it was just mm -hmm. basically around the French Square area. Um, and, you know, we started some preliminary uh, design work, and, and we got an estimate for, for now the water, sewer, and drainage in that area at about $3.2 mm -hmm. 
not even s several weeks later, um, you, you know, the town brought, uh, under the former town manager, brought Wooden and Curran back in. And, um, the, the uh, you know, we, w we were talking, uh, you know, about hardscape improvement. And, uh, you know, the, the master plan was being developed and we were getting feedback from, from residents at that, at that time. And yeah, because during that whole time period, there were meetings, public meetings. There was public meetings. Where people had an opportunity to voice their concerns right. and add their ideas. That's right. So essentially, we started with a project that was nearly like three and a half million dollars. But when you start having these public hearings and you start getting the public input from the residents, they're saying, well, why don't you add this and why don't you add that? That's why right. don't you add uh, uh, beautiful scape, uh, you know, landscaping in the center? Or maybe we should reconfigure French Square. So now you're getting all these things that are building upon the initial project. That's right. So that's, that's right. And, and so basically now at this particular point in time, because I understand even during the, those meetings, People, residents were asking that, that live up towards Pleasant Street, well, if, if you're doing it down in the, in, the, in the center district, why aren't you doing it up here? That's so right. yeah. additional add-ons. Yeah. If you're going to do a sewer connections, all new sewer connections, all the way up to Pleasant Street, up from all those side streets that come in, then obviously the project's going to balloon. That's right. So, and, so and you basically, if you look at the geographical area of French Square, in that area, and then you look at the geographical areas of all those side streets that go up, it's more than doubling mm -hmm. um, the project. And just by taking the line linear footage of each of those side streets, running it up from French Square to, the, to Pleasant Street and, and all the way around. So uh, it's a significant increase when you decided, or when the town decided to do that. Mm -hmm. It was nearly, it nearly doubled the, the, the area of mm -hmm. the project from the initial project. So then, you know, talks, Talks continued, and um, and we had a construction team, you know, the, the, uh, a task force mm -hmm. that, that the current town manager put together, and, and we talked, and we talked about, um, okay, uh, do we do we do this as as a, you know, do we phase this project and do it as a phase one and a phase two, and um, you know, with these new limits, you know, you know, the, the, so the initial phase was the 3.2 that I was talking about. Now we expanded it to potentially. Uh, this, this all the way up to Pleasant Street from mm -hmm. French Square, and that came in. That phase alone came in about 5.9. So, but then there was a talk. You know, business owners were starting to to reach out to the town manager, and they were concerned with, you know, how much construction and and how much, uh, you know, inconvenience can can we can we create. Mm -hmm. You know, without it really affecting businesses. Right. You know, and a lot of them, are, you know, are small businesses, and, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know. They're, they're doing well, but you know, too much you know can can, can really have a huge impact on right. it. So it went. We requested Woodard and Curran to, to price them separately, give construction estimates, and, and th I do want to just speak about that the construction estimates real quick. All along, you know, th we were just speaking construction estimates, and I continued to tell the town manager, look, this, and, and as did the design team. There's, there's construction administration. You, you've got a good sized project here. This, this can't, it, it can't just be the oversight of the DPW director right. and still be able to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, cover all my other obligations with everything else that's going on right. in town. Right. Uh, so we, you know, we knew we wouldn't have to get construction administration involved, you know, with the, you know, on-site engineer, resident engineer. Yep. And there's a cost to that. And, and you know, we tell, we're telling there's a cost to police details, too. This is a two-year project. Right. Police details are going to be substantial. Mm -hmm. So we figured all along about $1.5 million of construction administration and police details combined, yeah. which was never discussed. It was mm -hmm. always there, mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. well as underground electrical work. The, you know, the, we wanted to put the, the underground, you know, the utilities overheads underground. Right. And that was a $500,000 number that we were never, it was just never, we were just... Strictly we talked about construction. Yeah. We yeah. talked about it. Yeah. We knew the cost of it, but, but never it was, it was, was never portrayed in. properly, probably yeah. to the community. We knew these prices, but we just talking about construction estimates. And as they kept, you know, climbing, coming back down, as we separated projects, put them back together. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, the decision was made that the, really by phasing this project, it was going to make the duration of this project 
way too long. Mm -hmm. And it was going to be multiple openings, multiple closings, and it was going to look like the big dig down there for way too long. Right. So we decided to put it back to, you know, design it as, as a... Um, as a, as a single project mm -hmm. with that expanded scope. And, and I say decided, I mean, as the, as the task force, this all had to be decided by council right. and, and, and the community. Mm -hmm. um, personally, I think, you know, the, the, it all started back, uh, like I said, in early 2017, based around a Mass Works grant that had to be shovel ready. So we kind of backed into this project. Mm -hmm. Probably, we probably secured that grant too soon, and that grant would have worked for that initial project. Project yep. just around French Square, which was the 3.2 million. Mm -hmm. It would have, we would get we got the 2.38 for the grant, and that really made sense. Mm -hmm. But like I said, then the the scope changed, the and then the limits changed, right. and that's why all the different estimates um, they weren't misestimates. They weren't they weren't you know we had Coughlin Environmental Command give a peer review. Uh, the design was acceptable, mm -hmm. um, and we were designing drainage. We had the, the, the you know, the, the flood situation in, I believe, July of 2017, that heavy rain. Yeah. So then it became just, uh, you know, from upgrades on drainage, now we wanted to, do, we were told to, well, we, we want to design this so that that doesn't happen again. So now you, you, you went to a 10-year event, to, you know, engineering, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to, you know, accommodate that 10-year storm where right. usually y y you only have to you know engineer for 50 year events but we wanted to tr really minimize mm -hmm. that problem down there again so now you get four foot diameter pipes everything just grows and grows and grows and the bigger the pipes gravity systems the further you have to go away for inverts to work so it, it, th as far as that type of thing for drainage you actually have to build uh, capacity underground that's until correct. until the water can subside on its own or be pumped out through the harbor. That, that that's correct, right? Because so know, that's a pretty expensive proposition because you're basically is. putting yeah. storage and, tanks and, underground. And, well, and we, we've gone basically. in some areas four times the current size of the pipe. Mm -hmm. uh, in some er some areas, increased it even larger than that. Um, I authorized in September after looking at that storm and looking at the flooding and where the flooding was on Jefferson around Putnam Street and how it went down. Um, Putnam towards uh, Viking Garden to increase the inlets. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem was we only had like one inlet over there. So right. even even though the, it was it was rainwater, we couldn't get it into our pipes fast enough mm -hmm. because we only had one inlet. So right. even if we expanded the size of those pipes, unless we expand the inlets, it's not gonna it's not gonna help that problem. Right. So I authorized I think six additional inlets in that general area of Putnam and Jefferson going down in either, either direction to anticipate. I think you misspoke, Steve. You said the ten year storm as it's a hundred year storm. Um, was that the correct term? I just do one of the yeah, make well, sure the record's clear. But you said yeah, ten you year. Ten, then yeah, you said yeah, a fifty year yeah. we normally engineered yeah, too. Yeah, right, um, yeah, so right. I just yep. want to make sure that yeah. the, the so, record's clear so, on so that. So we were we'll be able to accommodate the, you know the the, the you know the, the, the large larger mm -hmm. scale on uh, you know unforeseen events. But getting back to you know when you go like like uh, Terry spoke to a four foot diameter pipe, you have to maintain coverage over that pipe. And again with the, with the gravity fed system. A four-foot pipe to get the coverage goes deeper. Now mm -hmm. everything has to, it changes because mm -hmm. you, you can't get the proper pitches with these larger pipes to meet certain points. So now you're going further and it grows and it grows yeah. and it grows, yeah. you know. And that's, and, and that's, what, uh, that's what, what happened. And, um, you know, and, and, the, and the estimates keep coming in. They were good estimates. Again, we had the peer review from Coughlin Environmental, mm -hmm. but the scope continued to change. Um, and, and no one really put it down in writing run uh, and sat down and said, okay, let's do something and, and report back on this. And uh, the former town manager um, he left it up to me and Steve and Joe. And in and, and July uh, of last year, 2017, we did have a document that we reported to the council on. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is posted on the website. And at that point, it was $8.5 million. And the $8.5 million, it clearly says in there, does not consider the 500,000, um, the construction and detail costs. Mm -hmm. And then after that report, right, so now Steve says about another 1.5 added to that, added that plus the 500,000, you know, we're at 10.5 now. 
So what happens to get us to 12, 12.5? 12 um, you look at the contamination, prior history of contamination down on Hagman and, um, not Hagman, excuse me, Putnam and Pauline Street. Mm -hmm. We did contract two, was it Steve That's down correct. there? Yep. Or, yep. Years contract. ago, yep. there was contamination there from, um, I'm imagining, the gas stations that were on, on the corners there. Right. So we had to then consider, is there further contamination on Woodside uh, by Pauline Street mm -hmm. and Woodside coming into the center? Are we going to see further contamination? Right. We didn't have a reserve cost. Okay. So they added a reserve cost, I think it was $900,000. $900, yeah. uh, so that increases now mm -hmm. an, almost another million. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the landscape architects, the council wanted the landscape architects on board and come up with a beautiful design and they fulfilled their obligation. Mm -hmm. I love the design. I really am pleased with the design. Um, however, none of those costs were ever, ever factored into the construction. Right. So that's another seven hundred thousand uh, dollars. So as you can see, every every move, mm -hmm. you know, if you want the granite seats and you want the the grass, the beginning to make make it look nice, mm -hmm. everything has a cost. Right. And um, at what point? You know, I, I think there's consideration to even expand this out even further. Mm -hmm. And at what point do we say, you know, this is now a project that should have been in two parts. We made it one part. Now it should have been in three parts, at least, if not four parts, that we're putting into one pot. Right. Um, so <clears throat> I know there's a lot of consideration and a lot of good people uh, with good intent to try to uh, tell us how this should be done. Mm -hmm. um, I am obviously uh, apprehensive about uh, if we keep on growing this project, what the real costs are going to be. And I think we have to look at and be realistic of what the state is going to give us. And for that $2.38 million, um, you know, if it wasn't for the speaker, we would have never got it right. on the size of the project that we were suggesting at the time. Can you, can you kind of explain that project in, in, under normal circumstances when you get that money? There's a commitment that has to be made by the community. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's, it's a big deal yeah. because we didn't really have to... In, in certain respects, have to abide by that. Yeah, yeah. They were, they were supposedly a guarantee. When when you get to 2.38 million, usually the state gets a guarantee of 120 units, additional units, housing units, housing units uh, in that area that they're dedicating money for. Right. Uh, Winthrop did not guarantee them 120 units. Right. Um, the, the speaker obviously had. A, certain influence and, um, and, and made recommendations that we were doing this big project to drive economic development right. and certainly that's still a cost. I would disagree with the DBW director and I don't think those businesses are doing uh, good. Mm -hmm. I, I think they're suffering. Mm -hmm. And in order to make them survive, I think we needed to redevelop the center, mm -hmm. make it a point where people want to go to um, and not be afraid to go into and be able to sit and enjoy themselves with their family. And we haven't delivered that. I think if we deliver that, I think people then go in there and spend money. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with the restaurants and whatever stores down there. Right. Uh, Robin's Nest, I had a conversation with them over the last summer, and uh, they moved from Revere Street down right. to the center. And they said, I said, well, why did you move? And they said, well, we wanted to be in the center. We know it's going to be beautiful in the end. So we moved here before, even <coughs> though we know it's two years of construction. Mm -hmm. um, to have people in, in foot traffic and, and be able to walk around down here. Okay. Um, so we had people, local businesses, um, based on our um, representations uh, act. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and uh, I, hopefully it's not to their detriment. Hopefully we are going to deliver a beautiful project down there and, uh, and continue on uh, building the center out. Um, but certainly we need, a, we need to be able to feed the businesses that are currently there. So right now we're in a situation where... We're, we have to make a decision whether we're going to proceed with the project as we have proposed it now with all the add-ons or make a decision to cut back to the original project, which was just more or less infrastructure improvements. So that's, that's really why we're having the meeting on the 3rd. We want to hear what people have to say about it. Yeah. Because no matter what we do, even if we decided to go ahead with the entire project and, you know, with the funding for up to $12 million, it's still going to be a two-year project, which starts with the infrastructure and ends with any of the other projects, whether it's to make French, Drea, French Square a, a little different configuration, adding the trees and, and all the amenities and so forth. So the town has got, has got to make the decision uh, whether or not we want to go ahead with this thing. The question I, I, I would I ask... I, I just think it's very important, to, uh, not to cut you off, um, to underscore and realize that we have borrowings out there. Right. That MWRA 
and that's, and other, that's what it, I was leading up to. That that. If it, you know, I don't want to accept that money, yeah. but we have an obligation to accept that money. Uh, me and the our director had this conversation at the 10 o'clock meeting this morning mm -hmm. um, because I don't want to start paying for those loans and increase people's water and sewer bills based on those loans if we're not going to do a project. Right. So it is imperative that we have so we clear direction. Dollar-wise, what do we have out there commitment-wise in terms of us loans from MWRA and, and other sources? What do, what's the total? Um, yeah. Right now on the MWRA is... Right now is on the water we have 2.44 million of water, of which 1 million is going to the DCR project up on Shore Drive. So that mm -hmm. leaves about 1.2 million in water yep. uh, main replacement down the center. We also have 200 and... Um, oh no, we have... Uh, uh, that I'm sorry, I'm confusing contract five with the, the, the lead money. We have... Um, the $2.38 million uh, grant grant. We Mass we the, the SRF money. SRF, we have not borrowed. SRF uh, is a 2% interest, mm -hmm. and we have authorization up to $4.9 uh, million on that. Um, that is much better than what we can do in bonding. Mm -hmm. uh, bonding right now is probably 3.75. Um, you know, the SRF, we can stretch over, over the 30 years. So the 30-year, you know, usually you go to bonding instead of a, a, a lower rate loan to get a, a stretched uh, more time to pay mm -hmm. it, to mm -hmm. lower the, the payments. Um, that wouldn't be a factor with the SRF. Um, we have the, you know, two years of Chapter 90 money committed, committed 200,000 a year. So it's a 400,000. Good news is, is there's no there's no borrowing on that. That's, no, that's uh, that's, that's money. a straight that's money. A grant. Mm -hmm. We do have $560,000 uh, sewer. Um, loan mm -hmm. that we, we have an application in for we haven't uh, we haven't finalized uh, uh, the, the bonding language uh, they, they would want that before they you know would approve the application but that would be additional borrowing there would mm -hmm. be a commitment on that it's a, it's a good program it's a 75 percent grant 25 percent town match right so it's 25 cents on the dollar it's mm -hmm. it's it's money well spent but uh, even with all this secured funding though there's still a bonding need. Yes, and that's the SRF. Um, I think we close the gap as we, as the, the, the council based on the, the council project, on the, yeah. Based on the the, 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 the total project. The total project. That, that, that is correct. Okay. Um, so and we have the um, Fleet Streets grant that was just awarded to 261. Yep, yeah. uh, right in that ballpark. Mm -hmm. you know, um, so that that was also dedicated to uh, the French Grant Project right. as well, uh, a major portion of it, mm -hmm. if not all of it. Pauline's, between Pauline Street and French Square, all of it would be used in that, that general area. Um, <clears throat> so we, we, all, we do have a lot of the money that, that um, you know, I think we have right now of about $5 million, um, secured. Th that is secured, secured, and the rest is waiting to be secured, um, mm -hmm. you know, and and, you know, if we go out, went from the $12.5 million project down to, I think it was $9.5 million project, that's about ninety-eight, uh, about $98,000 a year for the next 20 years. Um, remember my figures as, as best I can here. Mm -hmm. um, if, we, if we do the full project, it is, it, you know, it costs a lot more money. Right. Um, and we're, you'll be on the hook for, for about $300,000 over the next 30 years. Mm -hmm. And that has to come out of the general fund. Right. So that, that lowers our ability mm -hmm. um, unless there was an authorization. And I'm not suggesting it. You know, pub, the public doesn't want to hear it mm -hmm. of a debt exclusion or something right. like that. Right. And that's why I, I suggested maybe we roll the project back mm -hmm. to make sure we get it within the budget. Mm -hmm. You know, not that eight, you know, ninety thousand is easy. It's a lot easier to come up with than three hundred, three hundred forty-five thousand. Right. Um, exactly. You know, and, and then we, we had serious debates about where does the money get charged and how does it get charged, mm -hmm. and um, we wanted to make sure the water and sewer enterprise fund was paying their fair share, but wasn't being overcharged right. just to get a project done. Right. And, and you know, when they, when we met with the council auditor Dick Hingston. We were, we were able to separate things out so people saw what mm -hmm. was the water project, what was the sewer project, um, what if you, we did the water and sewer, were we able to charge off the, the public way, the street repaving to that? The answer was yes. The drainage could never be charged off the water and sewer. That right. had to come under the general fund. We did right. get an opinion on that. We, you know, just we did our due diligence to make yeah. sure everyone's being charged properly. I guess the only way it could be charged if there was a direct uh, uh, if, if there was a contamination, yeah. uh, you know, and, and that hadn't been identified 
at this point. Mm -hmm. And you might have yeah. that, even if we had that, you'd have it in isolated spots. Right. And only that portion would be able to yeah. be charged back, but not the whole project. One thing we did uh, you know, fail to mention, though, this project, this $2.4 million that, uh, of water money that, we, that was granted to us, you know, in, in, you know, it was it was a courtesy from the MWRA. Mm -hmm. They gave us money before our, our schedule of, of that money being available to us, which means that if that money is used for this project, mm -hmm. uh, we've already obligated the million dollars up the DCR project. But if they sell the 1.2 million, that's all of our water money from MWRA water money for the next 12 years. Right. Yeah, and up until 2030. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So uh, now it's you know. We, we know that we're going to have infrastructure projects in the next 12 years. Mm -hmm. So now there'll be, you know, how would we how would you go ahead and fund those yeah. later on? So. Well, to be continued, uh, obviously, but I think it was important that we kind of lay out as much as we could ahead of time as, as far as the misunderstanding on, on the project cost. And again, on, on April 3rd, you'll have an opportunity to voice your opinion uh, at the high school. Uh, as we get into these projects and we have to make critical decisions because that uh, the, the grant that we received has to be used within a certain period of time. Is that yes, correct? I mean, you know, we'll, we'll see if we can get extensions and, uh, you know, but two extensions have already been given to us on right. that on that project. Right. We're supposed to start this back in November. Um, so, you know, um, but I think it's important to say that's not the only topic we'll be covering mm -hmm. uh, at the community, at the yep. uh, public forum on the third. Yep. Um, but the ferry will be discussed as well. Yep. And the middle school middle reuse. School. Exactly. Um, so I think those are other two very important topics right. uh, that the public, if they have interest in either supporting or, or not supporting, that mm -hmm. we need it, we need to know that. Right. I think we're doing this too, and it's one thing I've always been advocating since we've gone to this new form of government. There's a limited amount of input from the from the community only at the meetings and so forth, and we felt that it was important. I think the council agreed that we have this kind of a meeting. It's almost like a town meeting where people can get up and, and you know voice their opinion on these projects, and we will continue to do that as as we go into with other issues. We we got a little under a couple of minutes, but I, I know Terry that. Uh, the police department has done a, a, a great job in the last couple of months um, addressing um, crises from not just Winthrop everywhere relative to drugs and so forth. Yes. And maybe you could just give us a top line of what's happened recently. Sure. Um, you know, in the past two months, we've had the big drug bust on, up on Pond Street, which was two kilos of cocaine and over a million dollars in cash mm -hmm. um, that had been seized by the Winthrop and Revere Police along with the Suffolk County Sheriff's Department. And we have created this uh, group of officers that are working together as a task force. Mm -hmm. um, it's been very productive here for us in Winthrop as well as Revere. Um, then we had, you know, just Friday we had the uh, drug arrest and search warrants for uh, a resident of 566 Shirley Street. She was taken into custody for distribution of crack cocaine. Mm -hmm. They seized over 100 grams of crack cocaine out of that residence. Um, that was a, you know, community nuisance. That was a, the neighborhood nuisance, uh, right. and we were made aware of it by diligent neighbors, mm -hmm. and we appreciate that. We need their information, and um, so then we had uh, B and E up on uh, Temple Ave. That has been resolved. Uh, the great work of the detective unit, um, and so one person from uh, from Chelsea has been taken into custody. The D&T market arm um, robbery has been solved by the task force with the state police, FBI, and local police. Yeah, great. Um, and then um, the arm robbery back in November, um, I believe it was November, December, uh, of an elderly gentleman. That person was apprehended rather quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so e even though we have crimes that are happening here. Um, the police department is very active in solving those crimes, and our solvability rate is extremely high. And I appreciate the effort of the men and women that want the police department. Great. And uh, certainly, the deputy chief has been a, a great uh, model for them to, to mm -hmm. assimilate their their activities. After he's great at directing uh, these types of investigations. Excellent, excellent. And on that note, uh, coming up on uh, what's the date on this? April second which is next Monday, Yes, Precincts 3 and Precinct 6. Uh, there will be a community meeting with the Winthrop uh, Town Council in partnership with the Winthrop Police Department. So if you're interested at the Senior Center, uh, come on down. I know that the counselors will be there to answer any questions after the presentation by law enforcement. Yeah, that's, that's at 6.30 p.m. 6.30, okay, at the Senior Center. 
Well, we're out of time. Uh, thanks, Steve, for, for coming in. My community Thank Forum you. and Chief, as, as always, thanks for My coming. My pleasure. Thank and, you for having uh, us. That's it on Community Forum. See you next time. Bye-bye.